Okay, hopefully my battery doesn't die, it's really low. Um, okay, so I want to talk about what the travel companion role is. Um, so I attended a workshop on Hold Up. January 6th in Arizona, in Phoenix. It was a workshop, it was a four day boot camp. I was supposed to work the first day and work the last day. Jason was currently working for, or looking for a travel companion, travel assistant, travel model. It always kind of had a different word, but it was encompassed in the travel companion. Um, it was specifically a job. Um, he talked about how, um, now I'm not saying, I want to put this disclaimer right there. I'm not saying that previous girls that had this role um, were treated and were treated the way that he um, treated me. And a lot of times he lied about what they did to make it seem like maybe I should be doing this too like giving him back rubs and stuff like that, but we'll, we'll get there. Um, okay, so travel companion is different than a model. A model is someone that goes to the workshops and the photographers take pictures of them, they model. Um, and sometimes they'll help him carry bags um, or set up lights or hold lights or hold reflectors. Um, the companion, while um, I was supposed to be able to do that stuff and be utilized anywhere that I needed. My job, and again, it was iterated numerous times, was to stay by Jason's side. Um, to stay by his side, to not be able, I wasn't really allowed to interact with um, um, the workshop attendees, really. I mean, I did anyways, but, um, but there were times where I got reprimanded for it. He said, you know, you spent a lot of time with the workshop um, attendees, I really need you by my side. Um, and a lot of times he talked about, um, he just, that's his love language, which we'll get to the love language. Actually, let's just go over love languages. Love language is how you like being told that you're loved or how you express love to other people and everyone is different. And he constantly told me he just likes to be touched. He needs to be touched. He likes hugs, he likes hand holding, he likes shoulder rubs. He might have mentioned the foot rubs at that point, but that's something I was never gonna do. Um, so um, he constantly talked about how that was his love language. And I should, as a companion, learn his love language and kind of go to it. We didn't get to that point where we were talking about love languages till like a little ways in. Um, my love language is like a negative five when it comes to touching. Um, so let's go back to the interview. So in the interview, Jason said, um, you know, you're gonna be by my side. Um, just, you know, you're, you're there as kind of, we kept calling me a muse, which, um, you know, I know with previous models, he did a lot of, you know, artful experimentation with them, so I was just totally down for that. Um, and um, just for us to become really close. But he talks about how work can be so draining and workshops can be so draining and so much is expected and he has to do all this. He's talking about how um, business is really draining. So what a companion's job is, is to just de-stress with them. He talks about other models that he would take on dates and that he genuinely liked buying the nice things, um, whether it was clothes, um, which later eventually became when he bought people lingerie for nude shoots um, to do with them. Um, and uh, um, he just talked about how, um, you know, my job is, I was like, so, you know, like, like friends? And he's, well, he's like, well, you know, a little bit more than that. You know, we're supposed to be close. And um, always by me and, you know, it basically kind of sounded like, like a girlfriend. <laughs> and, um, and I told him during the interview, um, I said, just to be clear, and I remember this being very vivid. I'm saying really angry now, but it was really like, kind of just real like innocent. Like, just to be clear, you're not asking me for, like it's not gonna be anything sexual, right? He's like, oh no, 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 like I've got a wife and kids. There's no way I would do that. And I said, okay, well, like, I just want to be clear. Um, like, I'm not saying that, you 
know, you are like that, but, you know, there's been times in my life where men have taken advantage of just kind of a vulnerable position that you're in, and, you know, and me thinking I'll be, you know, at the, this dude's beck and call that, you know, that I would be in a very vulnerable position. Um, when I came home from that interview, also, um, during that interview, um, he invited me to the whole the whole interview after doing one day in workshop in Phoenix, um, and he told me um, that you know he really liked me, he seemed to get along. I gave him a hug, and I was like, I don't normally hug people, so it's kind of a big deal. And um, and you know we just we actually genuinely just got along. I'm not saying I, I don't want to make it seem like he was just a bad guy from start to finish. I mean a lot of this stuff was had I known what he was trying to establish when I took the job, then obviously I wouldn't even be here talking to you right now. Um, so he, he just seemed like a nice, you know, charming dude, and he was well-known. He was the most well-known photographer I'd ever worked with. I, I was only like a month into modeling at that point. Um, I had done uh, film, like, before, and so I wanted to branch out to modeling to kind of uncover a little bit more artsy side with me. And here comes this celebrity basically this dude who is a sony artisan he's got tons of followers on youtube and i kind of figured if he was a creepo it would have come out and i would have heard about it or it'd be somewhere in the internet so i was just basically you know really kind of trusting with him and it's kind of sound like a dream come true and you know um and i'm not one of those people that that usually thinks well if it's too good to be true it probably you know is or yeah, it's probably not true or, or whatever. Um, so I was very naive, but opportunistic. I was very like excited, um, op optimistic about the whole thing. Um, so he asked me is, oh, so, sorry, um, did the workshop. He invited me to interview with him. He said, during the interview, we're gonna do an implied nude shoot because I'm not a new model, and I told him as such. And so he said, we're gonna do an implied new shoot. Um, you know, we won't see anything. It's really just to see how well our chemistry is from photographer to model, which made sense to me. So he hooks up, or we, we um, uh, meet at this place in Tempe called Moxie, and we um, do, a an implied nude shoot that eventually became a straight up nude shoot. Um, he just kind of he'll go with the flow when it comes to the the shoot, and then he will um, innocently tell you, you know, uh, the the curtain thing that you're behind, move it away, and you're kind of like you already been in, you're already warmed up to the 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 shoot, so you're just you just kind of go with it, and then. Um, Honestly, don't remember. And I can tell you, right, I mean, honestly, knowing the guy, I can see it could have gone this way, but I'm not gonna tell you that he told me to take off my underwear for that shoot, um, because I don't remember. Um, I know that in later shoots, it was expected, it was expected of me once every trip, he said to do a sexy shoot. And, um, and in those shoots, we would always warm up with just a boudoir like lingerie, and then he would always make me take my clothes off. Um, which, again, I just, you know, I thought I was making it weird by being like, well, here, here are my boundaries. And a lot of times he made it about, well, I'm just trying to show your shell, I'm just trying to open you up to new ideas and really help you grow as a model because I am an amazing photographer and I groom these girls to be amazing models, so I'm gonna groom you to be an amazing model, but you have to go with the flow. Um, so, um, um, that's about all I have for the, for the intro and the follow-up. Um, so now I'm just gonna read through um, some of the more incriminating texts and also how they relate to the video that he released. So. Um, the only thing that I actually really want, that I wanna discuss, I'll show you plenty of inappropriate texts that I've gotten from Jason. Um, just showing that it's not, that, you know, just because I was painted in a light where, oh, look at this girl just being totally inappropriate, totally unwarranted towards me, just because he says that doesn't mean it's true. 
um, and how it was months of ongoing. So I, I, I wanted to speak to the companion role again. Um, one, um, it started as um, an expectation of you know X Y Z, um, and then just became more and more boundaries. First place we went to was a hotel with one bed, and I actually had a panic attack and had to move to the couch, which I also have texts about, but I don't feel like I have to show you all this stuff, that stuff, anyways. Um, or maybe I should, I don't know, but, um, um, and it was just going back and forth between me wanting to keep my job and him telling me basically, you have to act like you really like me. You have to act like you're my travel girlfriend. Um, and so there are certain things that I compromise on my own values for. Actually, at the time, I probably didn't have a ton of them. Um, considering, I mean, no, I'm not even going to put that, just because I was in a dark place, um, or just because I was, you know, more, anyways, all that aside, um, there's, it was a constant, constant struggle of pushing boundaries of either an inappropriate touch, an inappropriate word, he'd ask me out on dates. Um, so we had this week, um, February 5th, the workshop at Jekyll Island, February 8th workshop in St. Augustine, February 11th in New Orleans, which is the Mardi Gras, which is the one that was pointed out on the video of me acting inappropriate towards Jason. And I actually want to tell you about that week because it actually is a very, very telling story and it's very important to this whole thing. Um, so up to this point, I had been guilt a lot about not, I wasn't comfortable sharing beds, I wasn't comfortable with him touching me. I constantly told him, you know, um, don't, don't grab my butt, don't rope me, don't do stuff like that. And at first, at first when he was doing it, I said to myself, well, technically, I mean, I haven't, I haven't told him my boundaries yet, so maybe we just need to have that discussion. So we have the discussion in San Diego, uh, workshop January 23rd. And um, so I, I had that discussion. These are my boundaries. Don't touch here, don't touch there. I, okay, I said, don't touch my boobs, don't touch my butt, don't touch my vagina. He said, I've never touched you there. I said, I get, I get that. He's never touched me on my vagina, but he had touched he had, he had touched my boobs at that point. He touched my butt at that point. And I told him, don't touch me there. I'm not, I'm not okay with it. And, you know, um, we really, you really need to slow down um, because I really don't know you that well. Um, I uprooted my life to be your companion and you seem to keep pushing my boundaries and not respecting what I want. And um, I'm not saying, you know, that we can't be close friends, but we need to start out as friends. So we had that discussion. Um, so we're on Jekyll Island uh, on the 5th. We show up in their one bed, and I am obviously very uncomfortable by it. So Jason kind of huffs and gets a room with two beds. So I'm sitting in my bed, he's sitting in his bed, he decided to edit. I'm reading the book. Um, and he just snaps his laptop down and said, what are you even doing? Why do I even have you here? I can have come in here and read a book next to me. You're not doing anything for me. And that led to hours of conversation. I went off, I said, I told you in Phoenix that if you were expecting anything sexual from me, that I that you needed to hire someone else, that I wasn't the girl for the job. And I told you not to do these things. I told you not to touch me in certain places, and it seems like that's not enough for you. And it just became this big argument. And basically, at the end of it, I was able to talk him down and kind of convince him like, hey, just slow your roll. You know, maybe I don't, you know, maybe um, just back off. Let me not sleep in the same bed as you or even in the same hotel room. Like maybe let me, like I'll still be your companion, still be by your side doing the workshops and stuff. Um, but, but maybe let me sleep in the other girls' rooms um, because it really made me uncomfortable. And so eventually he compromised. What I didn't know is that he had turned me into a model at that point. And that's actually very important. So I just, so keep that in mind. So we're in St. Augustine, February 8th. And when we were in St. Augustine, I can't remember if it was the 8th or the 9th, um, Jason um, suggested that we go on a date. 
because that's what he does with his companions. He told me it's like a casual thing, but it feels like a date, but it's not a date, but it kind of is a date, you know? And um, I don't know if it was like a seduction plan, but took me on a date. We went to a nice restaurant. We went for a long walk. We walked holding hands. I mean, I was just, you know, I was like, I can deal with this. I can, I can, you know, be that kind of companion without all this extra stuff. And, um, and uh, we got into a discussion. Um, you know, he thanked me for that night and everything. Um, he said, um, in, in regards to, at the time, you know, me having um, just communication issues, just um, not really understanding his assistant. At the time, I was like, I don't think she likes me. And um, he said, it'll get easier if you aren't in a transition state. Being fully in one role and not in two will make it easier once you're ready to make that decision. So again, he brings up the role. Um, what he was trying to drill into my head is like, you are either a companion and you straight up commit to it, or you're a model. They're not, you can't be a model and be a good friend, like you're, you're a model or you're a companion. And I wasn't really receiving what he was actually telling me. So it was like constantly we were arguing about what he's like, you're not committed to the role. I'm like, of course I'm committed to the role. I quit my job. I sold cars for two years. Like, um, which is another thing, saying on his video that, that all the girls he hires are just girls with no jobs that have never worked. I, I was selling cars for like two, two and a half years. And I quit that to pursue my dreams. And so anyways, on the 10th, uh, which at that point we are on the way to New Orleans. Driving, he flew, we drove. He said, uh, or I sent like, a, I had done a love language test and I sent him, and it's a one for physical touch, 10 being the, whole, the highest quality time was my highest, one was physical touch, only being touched. And I said, and I screenshot it and I said, hey, my love language test. And he said, makes perfect sense. It's why I drive you crazy. I said, you don't drive me crazy. I drive you crazy. And he said, you're like, get away from me. The test says all. And I said, no, you're like, love me by rubbing up on me. And I'm like, I love you by knowing we're enjoying the moment at the same time. So, oh, right. And then later he says, well, at least I'm spending time with you. I said, quality time, that's the key. He said, well, I've been focusing on your love language a lot to give you time. Because again, I was saying, you need to back off because it's stressing me out that you're touching me. And he, I said, hey, I, honestly, I love it. I'm working with your love language too, meaning I'm trying to be okay with touching you. He said, that's good. That's the only way it works if both people get their needs met. I said, very true, because why would you disagree with your boss? Um, so basically, by the time we get to New Orleans, there's four of us in one, there, there are two separate rooms, but it's one bed and one couch, and there's four of us, and we're supposed to share it. So I don't know if two of us are supposed to be on the couch, or one of us supposed to be on the floor, or whatever. There are no cots. This is just a motel type situation. Um, and, um, you know, I'm really trying to work because he straight up told me in Jekyll Island, like, if you don't figure out what a companion is, basically, or, you know, whatever, you're going to have to make a decision whether you're a model or whether you're a companion. And so, um, I don't know if that had a lot to do with it, or if I just, you know, I genuinely wanted to give the girls some space, because it was kind of, I mean, for a room that was packed as much as it was, with all of our stuff, because we all had a bunch of mo modeling gear with us, um, that, you know, I figured it might be easier if I just stayed with Jason. So, um, so he asked me later in the night, you know, what's going on, and I said, hey, I, I think that, um, uh, shoot, I just lost the text. Um, I said I'll st uh, that I wanted to stay with him, and we slept in the same bed, but like polar opposites of the bed, and nothing happened that night. Totally fine or whatever. Um, and then at that workshop, I I'm starting to warm up. Dude gifted me a camera. Um, I think when we were in Jekyll Island, he gave me that camera. And so me again, um, just totally manipulated. It by this guy to constantly push my boundaries, told me um, we're, we're in New Orleans and um, I just tried to focus on being a good companion. I held lights, I held umbrellas, I did whatever you know he wanted me to do. Um, you know, I was getting all excited about, you know, like the, the one clip he has of me just jumping up and down on his shoulders. Girls do not 
show guys that they love them by just pushing their boobs on them. Like, that's not, like, a thing. And so I'm jumping up and down behind him because I'm excited uh, about Mardi Gras. And he said, do you see this? This girl's cleaning on me and her boobs are on me. I'm like, well, actually, that kind of speaks more to your pervert mentality that that's what you're conscious of after all that. I'm, going, I'm not even thinking about that. And then he talks about how I'm hanging on to him when my hand is just on his back because we're in Mardi Gras. If any Okay, so my um, SD card ran out of memory space, and while I could just delete all the footage that I had or figure out how to delete it and all that fun stuff, um, I don't want to do it because <laughs> it took me so long to figure out just how to set up that camera. Um, I'm actually like awful at cameras. so. That's why I'm always in front of one and out running one. So um, I apologize for the insane drop in quality <laughs> of video um, for the video and probably the audio as well. Um, and uh, I, so because I ran out of space and I was really tired yesterday, I was kind of, you know, overwhelmed. I didn't um, make the end of this video until the next day. So hence why I'm why I look completely different. So, um, oh yeah. So where are we over the text? Okay. Okay. So, um, so you give me six hundred dollars in New Orleans and three twenty-five just now. That's nine twenty-five. Shouldn't it be twelve fifty? One twenty-five for ten days. Twelve fifty. And I got nine twenty-five, which is you know like. $325 less than what I was expecting. Um, he said, I have to check to see how many travel days versus shooting days there were. I said, what's the difference in pay between the two? Travel days are half. I thought it was $125 a day when on the road with you or your team. Yeah, that's true. When you're actually doing the companion role. Why? Because when it's a non-shooting day, you're actually still working as a companion, which is a benefit. When you're doing what the other girls do, it's not. It's one reason I've been wanting you to find your right role in place. By the end of the trip, it seems like you definitely did. So in the future, it'll be 125 a day when we're together. So let me just stop right there and talk about how he just clearly said that one, I'm not a model. That I had to choose to be a model or choose to be a companion. So in his video, when he points out about, well, Sierra's doing this and the other models aren't doing it. First of all, all of us models were always buddy buddy with them. But second of all, I wasn't um, just a model. I was actually in a transition phase where, or, or rather a phase where I didn't know what I was. He didn't know what I was. Um, he, he wanted me to be his companion. Um, I wanted to have the role of a companion. It pays more money and it's a freer job. Um, but I just wasn't willing to do all this other stuff. So when he starts guilt tripping me and by the end of the, or by the end of the, again, to quote, by the end of the trip, it seems you definitely did. Definitely found my right role in place of being a companion, which the end of that trip is New Orleans. 
is when I was jumping up and down, touching his shoulders. When I kissed him on the cheek, when I was going for the camera, which by the way, a kiss on the cheek is still not a green light for sex. It's still not anything but a kiss on the cheek. I seriously go to freaking church and kiss people on the cheek when I when I see them. It's not that doesn't mean anything. But Jason takes things out of context completely, uses it to spin this story about here's this girl's being inappropriate. Notice I don't reciprocate. Actually, you smiled and kind of bashfully like, well, okay. You didn't seem uncomfortable at all. Um, when I was jumping them and down, you didn't seem to mind it either. Um, there's plenty of times where we were walking, holding hands. Um, there were other times where, where you did more than that. And I don't see a video on that. Um, so anyways, so wait, I get paid 125 a day as a companion. What's my pay right now? Just a hundred dollars a, a shoot day and fifty dollars when we're traveling that's the model pay yeah okay so day two in saint augustine for example i didn't shoot and i just stayed up with you i didn't shoot i wasn't a model and i just or just, just stayed with you so basically that stay by my side i did exactly what you wanted me to what's the comp for that in day one where i did shoot in saint augustine as a model um, but we went out later on a date. What's that? That not being a companion? I think going on a date is a little bit more than being just a model, just like all the other girls. So then he says, Sierra, I'm not trying to short you money. I haven't done a straight up day by day breakdown, but you can't half, half out do the job. Stay with, oh, sorry. But you can't half in, half out do the job, stay with the girls, slash not know what you want to do, go back and forth, etc. It's just too much. That's why after Jekyll, I told, again, I told you we had this, this argument um, that lasted for hours when we were on Jekyll Island. Um, that's why we're on, uh, or why after Jekyll, I told you I was moving, in, moving you in with the girls and in their role until, again, as a model, until you decided what you wanted to do. Things get a lot easier for everyone once you find your space. It appeared to me that you did by the end of the trip. That's why I said you had until the end of this month to decide and for me to evaluate to see if it's the right fit. Again, that's straight up manipulation. You have till the end of the month to prove to me that you want to be my companion. Which, by the way, the end of that month um, was... We didn't even get there because that was Vegas and that was the end and that was as far as it went and I don't know if Jason thought that he could get away with what he got away with because maybe he thought after this conversation I'd be desperate enough to do more things to make it seem like I was a companion or if he thought just because I gave him a kiss on the cheek in New Orleans that that was a green light to do whatever he wanted. Maybe he was genuinely confused, but it certainly isn't a picture of I was inappropriate towards him completely unwarranted. <sighs> Anyways. I don't know if you can hear the signs in the background, but they're in my video too. Um, okay, that's why I said you had until the end of this month to decide and for me to evaluate to see if it's the right fit. I mean, I did breakfast with Quisha. Does that mean she's in a new role now or gets paid differently for that day? I went out to dinner with the entire team many nights. Does that mean they're all my companions and you aren't that day? No, it means once you're in the, your role, you're in it, and life gets easy. But the vacillating back and forth has a burden on you and others. I said, okay, I can't have this conversation with you over text. I'll call you tomorrow. Um, and then we talked, uh, oh wait, he said, well, then it's going to be tough. I don't like things unsettled, so if there's something to discuss, let's get it done. So at like 1030 at night, we had a conversation about that. So again, just to recap... Um, that is clear evidence that I was not a model, that he paid me differently because I was a companion, and that he used roles, that he used job titles, um, which, by the way, is whatever my career, whatever my job would be as I was traveling around with this guy, um, he used that as a way to get me to do things I didn't want to do or make me be okay or make me push my own boundaries and compromise my own values for him. So, um, 
So <laughs> next day, actually, this is just a little classic. I'll post it up there for you to see, but just, you know, I just really want you to see this. Um, actually, well, it's going to have to be clearer in the video. Playing this word game and, um, and the words are hand job. And uh, I said, I feel like my game is hinting at something. He said, LMAO, wow, your love language is changing. I said, in all caps, I didn't put that. This game is like word mahjong. He said, LOL, it must be psychic. Is that something that a boss would just text to anybody? Like, oh, a hand job. The game must be psychic. Like, what, what was even the implication? I said, I actually said, no dot 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 anyways I'm learning Spanish I know a decent amount but I want to be fluent completely change the subject because I'm not comfortable with that kind of stuff and yet again in his video plasters me as someone who who is inappropriate towards him um man I'm getting way more hated tonight <laughs> um okay so One of the last things that he said is talking about um, a couple times where he mentioned um, that Death Valley is going to be really fun. And I even sent him a text um, before going to Jekyll Island, just, or I mean, not Jekyll Island, yeah, Death Valley, um, saying, you know, that I thought he was a wonderful person, that I loved him for having a good heart, you know, like just, just mushy stuff. Um, that that a part of me meant um but you take small parts and small truths something that you can stomach and you blow it up and, and cater to what you know this guy with with an ego bigger than my future i don't even <laughs> like i i don't you cater to people you cater to your boss who's in a normal work environment no, but when your life is this dude's life, yeah, you do. Okay, anyways. So, he continued to be more inappropriate progressively, and, and I'll post some more things. But basically, as we were getting to Death Valley, he was getting more and more inappropriate. Um, it was a lot more aggressive about, um, you know, I, I talked about how I wanted to do a, a shoot, like a, I wanted to try doing shoots with, with models that were like sexy shoots, like with a guy or with a girl. And he's like, well, what do you want to do? What are you willing to do? How far are you willing to go? Is something that he said. Um, and then he, you know, talked about me shooting nude and I said well I don't want to do a nude and I told him that a couple times and he's like well hey I mean if you want to get out of your shell that's what you need to do and then I sent him like a ton of pictures of like no this is more what I had in mind I mean that's plenty of shell breaking out but um so it progressively got worse when we got to Death Valley and then um and I already told you a little bit about Death Valley so um so that was the end and in a weird way circled back to how I started these videos with a girl being left alone at, or just dropped off at an airport and then stopping to f take a hard look at what she had given up for herself from herself for some jerk who completely used her and it, it's crazy how much you'll convince yourself that something's okay or that you can get over stuff or maybe it's not that bad or maybe I'm overthinking it and you just keep pushing things because you really want to pursue your dreams and this man knows full well that that's exactly what you think that when it all came crashing to a stop I had to stop and process what had even happened and I sat in an airport for several hours waiting for because he just dropped me off and then I had to wait several hours for my flight. And I had to just sit in an airport and I was just crying to myself in a corner because, because I felt less than worthless over all of this. So that was the whole story. Um,